Traveling with a toddler can intimidate even the most seasoned of travelers, but we're gonna show you how to travel with a toddler to Europe or anywhere else in the world and how to do it without losing your mind. We made the mistakes so you don't have to. We'll break down the entire process from picking a destination, booking a seat, how to survive the flight and what to do at your destination. And watch till the end where we give you our list of the best toddler plane tips. First up, picking a destination and booking your travel. Now, most of Europe's cities are super kid-friendly and with all of the public transportation, you won't need a car seat. We recommend picking any medium to large city in Europe. That way, there will be plenty of parks to play at and you won't need a car seat to get around. But if you do need a car seat, you can rent one in your destination through companies like Babyquip and Babonbo. When it comes to planning your schedule, don't hop around too much. Five days at a place is a minimum, maybe four if you're limited on time, and we'll explain a little bit more on why you should move this slowly later. If you're curious about other travel specifics like our diaper bag, getting milk through security and other items for baby travel, we cover all that in our video right here. Next up, booking your airline seats. The days of free travel are likely gone for your toddler. <laughs> I know. If they're two years old, they will need their own seat. If they turn two while you're on your trip, you will need to buy a round trip flight for them in their own seat, even if there's still one when you depart for your trip. That's kind of so sad. sad. So sad. <laughs> RIP wallet. When you're traveling to Europe, most European airlines say that you need a CARES seatbelt harness if they're under the age of two. But during our recent travels to Europe, we were never asked for it, but we still had one just in case. And remember, when traveling internationally, your child will need their own passport. Something to keep in mind when you're at the airport. Most European countries have family security lines and family boarding. If you don't see it, ask around. European countries are very family friendly. Now this is a big one. When you're traveling, especially internationally, we always recommend purchasing travel insurance. Our go-to insurance for the past three years has been Allianz Travel Insurance. Before the trip, you simply share how long you'll be traveling and what countries you'll be traveling to. When we're traveling, we use their Elise app for 24 seven support. Now Allianz covers travel delays, lost baggage and medical expenses. And the plans are super budget friendly. I think the only thing that Allianz doesn't cover is toddler sleep regressions paired with jet lag. That's brutal. That's pretty tough. <laughs> okay, the travel day is finally here. It's game time. First big question is, should you check all your bags? For us, we do everything possible not to check any bags. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> this saves us time and eliminates any stress of airlines losing our bags. However, it also means we feel like, actually it's more me, Yeah feels like a donkey carrying all the heavy bags through those hot European airports. Yeah, they just don't like AC, do they? <laughs> Now, if you do decide to check your bags, remember baby stuff flies free on most airlines. You can gate check items for free as well based on your airline rules, so check those. Be sure to write your name and contact information on your baby items. You would be surprised how many people have the same crib or stroller at luggage claim. Now, when it comes to strollers, this is a big one. We love this one. We use the Bugaboo Butterfly Stroller. Now, this folds up and fits in the overhead. It does not count as a luggage item, so you can still bring your bags on board too. And as small as it is, it is very durable. I've oh, been yeah. blown away by it. It's been to 11 countries with us. She gets around. As for the flight, have a plan, but be willing to adapt. Like Mike Tyson says, everyone has a game plan until their baby punches them in the face. <laughs> so our first toddler airplane travel tip, come prepared with new toys that are saved specifically for the flight. Some other things that help us on the plane are these make a face sticker books. Now our daughter loves these. Simple blue tape is also helpful to keep her occupied on the plane. And it can also help toddler proof a hotel room. And we also love bringing crayons and not markers just for the cleanup sake. Okay, the next one is maybe the most important one of all. And if you're a parent, you know this, snacks. So we pack easy to travel with items like Cheerios and Mission Mighty Meat Puffs. Now we also try to have some special treats for her on the plane, like a croissant from Starbucks. We reserve these for airplane days so that it creates the feeling of this being an exclusive special experience. And now when it comes to food, we used to make these tasty egg bites that had like spinach and sweet potatoes in them. They were amazing, but she ended up just not eating them sometimes. So other days we might just resort to like tasty McDonald's chicken nuggets. You know, on travel days, it's all about surviving, not necessarily thriving on the plane. We prepare when we can, but we have to adapt as well. 
Now don't stress so much about the messes or the noise. It's usually not as loud as you think it is on the plane. And if it gets really messy, you can clean it up right before you get off the plane. As for screen time, each family and baby is different. And now here's our philosophy. We try to limit screen time as much as possible leading up to a trip. That way, when we get on the plane, she's ready and excited to watch a show. It also creates anticipatory excitement for her because she knows that when she's on a plane, she gets to watch the screen. And as for the screen, I recommend buying a refurbished iPad through Amazon. These are so much cheaper than buying a brand new one. Right now you can get one from 2018 for like 125 bucks. That way you won't freak out if your toddler decides to chuck it across the aisle. They would never do that, right? <laughs> Now we also pay for YouTube Premium so that we can download the most recent Miss Rachel and obviously Disney Plus for all the classics. And now another little tip, when you have YouTube Kids and YouTube Premium, it will automatically download those episodes for you. Oh, that's fun, I didn't even know like that. It has like a hopper full of them ready to go. Thank you, YouTube. Yeah. Now for the hardest part of travel with a toddler, nap time. <laughs> This is one of the hardest things for us. Now you can try to get your toddler to nap, but also be okay with the idea that they might not nap. I know that sounds really scary, but they will survive and so will you, I promise. They might cry, you might cry. I've cried on a plane before. It's gonna be okay. I should have told myself this on the last flight. <laughs> now as for the red eye flights to Europe, don't panic if they only sleep for a few hours. It's likely that the plane lights and noise will keep them up way past their bedtime. Do what you can to facilitate sleep. And when they need it, they will sleep. One of the things we've found is that even with the lack of sleep with the red eye flight, our toddler has adjusted to time changes very quickly, usually faster than we do. Actually. Oh yeah. Yeah, the jet lag in kids is way less than adults. So you finally made it through the flight and you're at your destination. First thing to do, get outside. Do everything you can do to adjust to the new time change. Sunlight is your friend. However, keep your expectations low. Time changes are tough. Jet lag is rough on everyone. You are resilient and you will get through this, I swear. As cliche as it sounds, sleep when the baby sleeps for jet lag. <laughs> what I mean by that is normally they have their whole schedule of maybe it's like eight to eight and they nap one to three. With jet lag, that might be different. They might be going to bed early and waking up very early, and you don't wanna be staying up late hoping that they're gonna sleep in. Just go to bed when they do. Trust me, you'll appreciate waking up early with them versus them waking you up. One other thing, when we travel to Europe, we keep our toddler on a modified schedule. At home, she usually sleeps eight to eight, but in Europe, after a few days, she sleeps 10 to 10. That way, she doesn't do a full time change, and it allows us to go out to eat at night. And the other thing that helps keep our baby on that 10 to 10 schedule is the slumber pod. It's something we use everywhere. It's like a big blackout tent. That way she doesn't see the sun early in the morning and have it wake her up. And we'll put a link below for all the things that we're recommending. Now here are a few more destination travel tips. Travel by train when possible. Kids love trains and they can move around and it's way less stressful than the airport experience. Highly recommend train travel in Europe. And don't pack your schedule. Expect about 50% of your time to be downtime or chill days at the park or just relaxing inside. Low expectations, guys. It'll make everyone a lot happier. Also, book an apartment with a balcony. You and your boo can have a moment while the baby sleeps. Having a balcony also helps my FOMO because I have serious FOMO when Scotland is sleeping. I wanna be out in the city experiencing it. So if I have a balcony that I can overlook the city, I feel like I'm one with it. Yeah. it. Really helps my brain. And we talked about it before, but pick a place where you don't need a car seat. Europe has plenty of walkable cities with great access to public transportation. And now that you have a toddler, it's good to stay within walking distances to parks. Simple activities in new cities still make magical memories. And we kind of learned that on our most recent trip, we thought we were traveling like we would as the two of us, and we realized, oh yeah, we have someone else in our family, <laughs> and they like to go to parks, so and they like to move at a different pace. And they do. And lastly, find activities with free entrance for kids. And pro tip, if you're traveling to the Moco Museum in Amsterdam, stay away from the stuffed animal room. <laughs> because our toddler wanted to hold them all and it led to a major meltdown. <laughs> I think our final tip for everyone with a toddler is rip the Band-Aid off, go out there and travel. It's tough, but it's gonna be tough at home and it's gonna be tough if you travel but the memories that we have made on the road are so unforgettable and we're so happy that we've done it. Yeah, I feel like traveling doesn't end when parenthood begins. I think it's really important to go out there and do the things that make you you because it really makes us feel like us again. I, there were so many times on this past trip that we were like high-fiving, being like, we're doing it, we're doing it. I mean, there were other times where I cried on the plane when she was crying, 
we get through it, guys. Highs and lows, it's parenthood. <laughs> it's hard, but you can do hard things. So, safe travels, thanks for watching.